Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church for our virtual weekend worship. The worship bulletin is linked down in the description of this video, um, as well as you can get it out of our worship email and the St. John's Bell Tower. If you're not on any of those email lists and would like to be, please email the church office and we would be happy to get you um, sorted out. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you 
in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Praise to the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will make, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. 
I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sari, your wife, you shall not call her Sari, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us proclaim together Canticle 14. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me. In accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come from Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us proclaim together Canticle 19. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of the Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I have a hero in my life. Kind of like a superhero, but without a cape. And perhaps his, his superpower is sustainability. Because over many years, he was able to do what no one else has done before. And chances are that unless you've heard me talk about this man, you will be like most everyone else in the world and have never heard of him either. Frankly, he's an unlikely hero. And without his faithful sidekick, Otto, he would not have accomplished his goal and completed his journey. Gunther Holtorf is my hero. He's now in his 80s, but starting in 1988, Gunther and his late wife, along with Otto, his sidekick, a new Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, planned to drive across Africa for an 18-month trip. That 18 months stretched out to 26 years, 900,000 kilometers, six continents, and 215 countries. He even drove through North Korea. Otto now resides in the Mercedes Museum in Stuttgart, and Gunther has retired to his home in Germany. There's something different about this type of travel compared to, say, running to Harris Teeter for more cheese, or even the comparatively long drive to the Outer Banks for a family vacation. How do you sustain this in the long run? Simplicity was Gunther's driving principle. Every item he carried on his trip needed to serve at least two purposes or be absolutely essential. And even when digital cameras became the norm, Gunther continued to document his journey with a simple manual Leica film camera. And his photos are amazing. And Otto, even after 900,000 kilometers, remained mostly stock, except for some stronger suspension springs to handle the extra weight of this home on wheels. There was an intentionality in keeping things simple in order to create the sustainability required for long-term travel. Simplicity and the basics are often the best starting point and even the normative standard for establishing and maintaining sustainability. So the three major religions of the world, the three Abrahamic faiths, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, all came from the simplicity of the Abrahamic covenant that we find in Genesis. Yes, countless words have been written to document and explain the importance of this covenant. Whole sections of libraries house volumes written about this covenant. 
yet the simplicity is there. I, God, will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Through Abraham's faith and God's grace, Abraham and all his descendants, of which we're included, are in covenant with God. I will be God to you, said God to Abraham and all of Abraham's descendants. To be God to you, that is God's promise. That's God's covenant with us. St. Paul lays out the simplicity of this covenant and in its simplicity, its sustainability. Paul argues that the promises of the covenant are not a result of the law or works before the law. They're a result of faith. First, Abraham's faith and now our faith. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promises may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants. In the presence of the God in whom he, Abraham, believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Abraham's faith brought us the God of our covenant. Our faith sustains the covenant and our relationship with God. Sustainable long-term travel, like the journey of Gunther, requires that some of the simplest things come together to sustain the journey. Water is important. Most of the world does not have the same access to clean water that the developed world enjoys. Fuel is also important. Most of the world doesn't have four gas stations within a few hundred yards of where I'm standing right now. We must have fuel for the journey. And we must also know the way. Maps are needed to guide us on the journey. Interestingly, Gunther funded much of his journey by making maps of the places where he traveled. So we need water, fuel, and a direction for our journey. And again, this is the beautifulness in its simplicity. Speaking at the well, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Jesus also proclaims, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Water for the journey, check. Fuel is also abundant and living. Give us this day our daily bread. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Fuel for the journey? Check. Now we need to know the way, the direction of our journey. Jesus also made this simple. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Directions for our journey, check. Our journey is not the equivalent of a quick trip to Harris Teeter or not even a six hour drive to the Outer Banks. Our journey is more like the journey of Gunther and Otto, a journey that began simply and never seemed to end. And Gunther would remind us, keep it simple, drive a kilometer at a time, and never drive faster than 80 kilometers an hour. 
So Brother Jeffrey of the Society of St. John the Evangelist frames that same advice in light of Jesus. He said, when you wake up in the morning, don't open your internet or read the papers until you have first said good morning to God. Have a prayer or a psalm that you say first thing to greet God, to reaffirm who you are and why you are. Rediscover joy first thing in the morning. Think on what is true and lovely and honorable and pure before you face the world and Facebook. So beginning each day by setting our hearts on Christ is to build a firm foundation of stone, not one of sand. It's a foundation that in its simplicity will carry us forward. With that foundation established, we can then turn our attention to other parts of our worship and life. We can begin to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the word of God. We can grow and develop in our corporate worship because we're only Christians in community. But that is a topic for another day. With our firm foundation of welcoming Christ into our heart each morning, we can begin to live as God desires us to live. We can do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. We can, each morning, confirm our covenant with God. Sustainability is found in simplicity. And finding God each morning, every morning, will sustain us for the journey. It need not be fancy. It just needs to work. And simplicity is what took Gunther and Otto 900,000 kilometers. Our journey with bread, water, and Jesus as the way is one of simplicity and sustainability. Amen. Let us pro proclaim our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the people. We are in all of you and your promises. Help us set our minds on you. Your world is aching and healing. 
Make us good stewards of your creation, Lord. Grant our president and our leaders in the courts and Congress compassion and wisdom. Have mercy upon us, set our minds on you. Your church is reaching for you. Help us extend our reach to all whom you love. Have mercy upon us, set our minds on you. Your people are being born, are ill, are both anxious and joyous. They are hungry and cold and don't know where to turn. They bend under the weight of their lives and rejoice in your life-giving love. Enable us to bring them to your healing and fullness of life. Have mercy upon us, set our minds on you. We offer prayers especially for Dorcas, Harry, Sean, Marjorie, Diana, Betty, Olivia, Adeline, Shireen, Ava, Pam, Michael, Matthew, Anne, Francis, Catherine, Peter, John, Stan, Beblon, Cheryl, Mary, Maura, and Chris. Have mercy upon us, set our minds on you. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to us who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take a moment now to offer prayers for those who are sharing in the Eucharist within their homes. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please take a moment to reverently consume the host, and if you are with family, perhaps give the host to each other with the words, body of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we give you praise and thanks for this holy communion of the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the pledge of our redemption, and we pray that it may bring us forgiveness of our sins, strength in our weakness, and everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church 
and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. As always, it is a privilege to worship with you. Have a wonderful week.